gracious ladies and gentlemen, a law, the science of an individual's buoyancy and bon vivant, the understanding of the good feeling that is manifest within the soul finely attuned to divine grace and able to distinguish the source of his being raised up. This is to be conveyed to the aspirant upon the path at the time that he is able to overcome those fearful momentums of the past which have generated pain and sorrow within the orbit and world of the individual. It is our desire to teach you how to rise, not how to remain bound by the cords of inertia and inactivity. It is our desire to teach you how to understand the meaning of divine grace. When I moved among the crowned heads of Europe and at the courts of Europe, I entered the rooms carrying with me an aura of a long, that men were made to feel the buoyancy of their own souls was to them a cosmic miracle, for many of them surfaced and as a cork bobbing upon the waves were able to feel the joy of the sparkling and gaily dancing sun. A few moments before, they were indeed in a subterranean world. They were in a world of emotional substance, each one trying to impress the other with the grandeur of their face and form or to display the garments which they wore because they did not understand how they could draw forth from on high the great electric spark of God which is far superior to all fashionable designs. As I come to you this afternoon, under somewhat obstinate circumstances, I desire to bring to you nonetheless the mighty favor at the court of Almighty God which will win for you that raiment which is of divine origin, that you may learn how to cultivate the sparkle in the eye that is God-inspired, that you may learn how to manifest the beauty of countenance which is occasioned by familiarity with the face of God, that you may understand how you may reinforce the technique divinely employed by mystics down through the centuries, whereby they were able to maintain a change in their appearance from time to time, from age to youth, and to show forth the power of light as the power of transformation raising not only their thoughts and feelings to a state of buoyancy and joy, but also the physical form, so that the very atoms within the substance of that form did cavort and behave as though the very spirit of youth was indeed alive and in manifestation in themselves. You do not know, precious ones, the activity of God that is manifest in a tiny baby that infant sparkling with divine desire for perfection does attract your smile and you are able to rejoice in the face of this infant come yet a little while past from the very courts of heaven. Understand, precious ones, the law of God that does not take exception to a man or woman because they are advanced in age or have matured, but is perfectly willing to bestow this self-same spark which is manifest in a baby upon an individual whose thatched roof has become somewhat gray in tone. I wish to call to your attention then that the life and joy of God is sparkling and dancing in the atmosphere all the time, and it merely requires an attunement of your own blessed selves with the joy of God to bring it into manifestation. First, there is the still pool of the mind, and as though one were to cast a pebble into the mind, one instead places a thought of gaiety and of youth and of divine delight into the pond of being and then watches and stands back 
at the very edge of the pond and throws back the head and with a joyous laugh watches the ripples of the idea implanted in the self begin to manifest and stir the entire pond. So is the emotional body affected and then when one affects the emotions, soon the mind must be in hot pursuit as a lady will drop her handkerchief and then cause a man to pursue her to bring it to her. So the mind will come and bow to the emotions when stirred by God ideals. And thus there will be a reunion of mind and feeling. And in that sublime moment, one can apply to the great etheric body of their being and ask that there be released therefrom a stream of radiant energy from the Godhead, which is reminiscent of the moment when the soul first came to self-awakening and self-awareness and spoke and said, Lo, I am, with the joy that that occasion brought. It will then be brought again to mind and rekindled so that the soul can laugh at age and at all the passages of time and the ravages which seem to take their toll of other men need not of necessity affect yourself for you can at least maintain if not in the appearance world then in the thought and feeling world that spirit of elastic joy which is ascended master God inspired. It is so desirable to do this and yet I was able at the court of France and other courts throughout Europe to manifest the appearance of a man about 40 years of age when I was often in one given embodiment in actuality hundreds of years old. They did not quite understand just what was taking place and some of them I fear secretly thought that perhaps I was in reality my own grandfather and that perhaps I was also a look-alike and therefore did manifest some similarity of appearance to that which they had seen and witnessed 30 or 40 years past. You must realize, blessed ones, that there lies within the domain of yourself great cosmic laws that can change your feeling and your thinking about yourself until you will be able to manifest the God victory which overcomes the world. This in itself is a prime and potent example to mankind who when they gaze upon you and see this manifestation will also recognize that perhaps there is some slight deficiency in themselves and they may desire after all to pursue the fountain of youth with a greater alacrity. Alas, O vanity, thy name is vanity. Thus mankind seek to manifest the appearance of youth and the feelings of youth yet they do it for the sake of human vanity whereas we do it for the sake of the human family that we may manifest the pure image which God himself adores and thus fulfill the edicts of divine manhood. Understand the recompense of the law precious ones each child of the light who manifests the divine principles of freedom will bring to the great God designer the beneficent approbation of a world that cannot deny the evidence of their senses. But when individuals insist upon living in such a manner as to bring discord and inharmony into their thought and feeling world, they will inevitably manifest this in some manner or other before their fellow men. And thus they do in effect actually bring discredit upon the God who created them to be perpetual flames of divine youth and to manifest it at all times. I do not in any way despise the fact that individuals will show the appearance of age for until they come of age spiritually and mature they cannot be expected to manifest it of necessity in the outer world of form. Yet perhaps our hopes are too high. I recall one time in a conversation with El Moria of recent date that I quoted the old poem, I shot an arrow into the air, it fell to earth I know not where, and Moria with a twinkle in his eye replied, I know where. And therefore, you see, we do have our own little private jokes among ourselves, for there was a specific function that is involved here concerning past history and concerning an arrow and concerning an individual including a lady which I am not permitted to tell you about lest I breach a cosmic confidence 
and heaven perish the thought. For after all, blessed ones, if I should breach a cosmic confidence, you might be so inclined to breach an earthly one and say, well, the ascended master Saint Germain himself did it, why can I not do it? You see, precious ones, the power of example from our level must be brought to your attention, and it must be the power of a good example. Therefore, you will understand that when we bow to you, it is to regenerate within your own world self-confidence. Because, after all, you say to yourself, St. Germain bowed to me, and there must be something good within me that he saw, else he would not have bowed to me. I want you to understand, precious ones, that all that the ascended masters do is with purpose, and none is without purpose. Even when we seem to be engaged in some aspect of levity, it is because we desire in our heart to spark some God demand within your own world, which will bring you the blessings of God eternally, and will produce some change in your world that will cause joy to manifest, not for a moment as a burning candle, but for a permanent force field in your world that will never go out because it is sparked by divine ideation. Now, if you will grasp with me this precious thought for a moment, you will recognize that all of you actually hold within yourself the capacity to think. If you hold the capacity to think, then why not do so? And if you hold the capacity to think, why not do so in a cogent way, that is divinely cogent, and recognize that a thought is a spark to lift. Therefore, if you will think that God has wrought deliverance and freedom for you from fear, from doubt, and from all that mankind have imposed upon themselves of bondage, you will say, this is nothing. It is human creation. It lacks the warmth of my divine presence. It lacks the warmth of the ascended masters. It has no identification with permanent reality. And therefore, why should I not discard it? Thus you will cast aside the outworn garments of self, and you will replace them by the mighty transcendent garments of light by simply saying to yourself, I am a being of divine delight. My consciousness is fair. You will recall that in a dictation of some time past, I myself did speak and said, quoting an old poem also, mirror, mirror upon the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And I said, with all of the vanity I could muster, why, I am. And therefore, I brought to your attention the great power and potency of reality, whereby you could strengthen your own consciousness, not by seeing human vanity or seeking to daub on by paint and powder some outer semblance of divine youth, but rather by dipping into the fountain of God reality and drawing forth the spark that made you beautiful as a baby. Understand then, precious ones, that this power lies within yourself and is from the dimensionless realm of Almighty God. It is the infinite capacity to change plastic substance into divine reality. Take your flesh forms, for example, and consider for a moment that you are a sculptor endowed with the great wisdom, the breadth, the depth, and the perceptions of Leonardo da Vinci. Consider then that you are able to change your form. How would you change that nose? How would you change those eyes? How would you change that look? How would you make that form glow? You then must decide because you are the prime mover in your own world. If you do not move in your own world, you will become subject to all of the arrows of mortal hostility that are ever arrayed against the good and the beautiful, who desire to say, I don't think they really look very nice, or their eyebrows are too high, or perhaps the hairline is too low, or some quality is just a little bit of the type that ought to be criticized. If you will let the arrows and slings of outrageous fortune, the arrows of mortal hostility, come against you as they do against every beautiful woman, ladies and gentlemen, then I assure you, you will find that you will be out picturing the arrows of mortal hostility and you will need to resort to all types of maneuvers in order to produce beauty in your form. And gentlemen, I assure you, you can be just as beautiful in your own way as the ladies if you will give your application to your divine presence and say to that presence, mold me in thy light, mold me by thy right, shape my form to adorn thy grace right now in cosmic flight, for I am going to thy home. I am going wherever I roam to find my way back home.
Now these words may seem to you to be just a little bit silly if taken from the standpoint of the mortal, and I assure you that I could have doctored them up to make them just a bit more palatable to your mortal mind, but they embody a certain concept of flight, of flight out of the dimension of human bondage into the radiant spheres of cosmic light which is your home. Now you are not going to be able to get there, precious ones, by a mere wish to do so. It must be by a cosmic intent that molds and shapes not only the physical form, but all of the nature that is within you. You are inclined to say, why, I have a human nature, and I am not able to change that human nature. It was molded over thousands of years, and perhaps even a million. How do you expect that in a matter of a moment, by simply expressing a thought, I am going to be able to stir the pond of being to the point and extent where some real inroads will be made upon all the crystallized dense substance which composes my character and manifestation. Ladies and gentlemen, you must start somewhere. After all, you may not always look to us as though you were firemen going to a fire, but I assure you, you have a need to do so. You have a need to actually blow the sirens. You have a need to actually sound the alarms. You have a need to do as you sometimes say to one another in a laughing way, push the panic button because you right now are embodied in physical form in the great cosmic university of Almighty God in order to graduate from this university summa cum laude. And if you are to do it, it must be done because you will give your attention to those things which will enable you to successfully commute to the higher octaves of life and to compute how you may end mortal strife and sin and stain and all that which has brought you unhappiness. You see, most individuals give no thought whatsoever to life except to plan ahead according to mortal standards. But there is very little actual planning done by mankind according to divine standards. There is a prayer or two expressed to deity to relieve them of personal responsibility and transfer that responsibility to the Godhead. There is sometimes a sudden supplication made to deity in times of trouble and stress, but very few individuals actually plan from day to day how they will be able to draw out the pattern of the cosmic man and mold themselves according to that pattern. No, blessed ones, they are so busy defending the mistakes of a misguided ego that they have no time whatsoever to be able to plan spiritually for a blueprint of their own life that they may design themselves according to God intent. You see, you are a co-creator with God. And when he gave you free will, he also with that free will gave you a solemn responsibility to freedom that you would of necessity play a part in the shaping of your own destiny. Mankind today are so prone to lean upon others that many of them actually lean upon us to the point where we sometimes, when they are asleep, hand them a crutch or a cane in their dream state and say, why don't you walk upon this for a while until you learn at least to support yourself upon that which is substance to your own world. Individuals constantly cry out to us for assistance, and when we give them assistance, what do they do with it? I tell you, precious ones, they pick up a group of dictations from our level, and some of them read it and actually fall asleep while reading it. Is this attention to the word of God? Is this attention to the powers of light and divine illumination? I tell you, no. Now, some individuals want formulas from us. They desire that we shall give them a certain formula of an alchemical nature, whereby they will be able to manifest or draw forth some outer symbol showing their power over nature. Well, I tell you, precious ones, when you can command yourself to obey you, when you can demonstrate and obtain self-mastery, all these things shall be added unto you. You will not require to ask us the formula to express the power of divine alchemy. Rather, you will simply speak the word, and the word will obey you. You will have obtained, you will have entered into the blessed state of the ascended master's octave even before your ascension. Gracious ones, this is how the ascension is won, by mastery, not by turning to every little idle thing and saying to this little idle thing, 
you are important when it is no more important than a marshmallow. Precious ones, why not enter into the spirit of the ascended masters? Why not perceive the ridiculous situation in which you live and dwell, where from time to time you continually deny the power of heaven and the power of heaven's sons and give power to outer energy? Do you know, precious ones, that a most awful state of affairs existed just before I came to speak to you? A certain black magician had locked a very hateful ray upon this messenger and was determined to prevent me from coming through. But when I came into the room, I acted in the name of this messenger because he had given to me permission to do so. And I dispersed him with one glance, and he is now locked in a sphere of blue fire substance where he will be taken by the powers of light for judgment to the very center of God's own will. I tell you, precious ones, Mankind do not realize all the forces of evil that are being directed and misdirected against the children of light. They do not realize the powers of the invisible world, and I am now referencing the sinister world, where the strategies are hatched to try to strip mankind of all the great blessed power and reality of our octave of light. Yet I tell you truly, this world of darkness and shadow has no reality for us. For we dwell in the light of God which never fails, and we invite you to also do so. Will you come into this world of our reality? Will you put our great purple fire cape upon your shoulders? And will you become noble men, able to create and dominate every situation into which you enter? As you enter a room, let the eyes of men turn upon you, but let the eyes of men turn upon the great divine God being that you in reality are, and let that divine being sparkle and scintillate with the light of God. You do not need, precious ones, to seek some embellishment for the great God creation that you are in reality. You need simply to let your light shine before men that they may see God's good work shining through you. It is not necessary for you yourselves to seek to enter in to these dimensions by mortal activity. You simply require, according to cosmic law, acceptance of the ascended master's hands, of your own divine presence, love, of all the qualities of God, and let them sparkle through your mind. Regard your mind as substance under your divine control. Put thoughts into your mind. Kick out thoughts that do not belong there. You must win this game, as you were told in a recent decree which beloved Godfrey released unto you. You must understand how to carry the ball of salvation through to the goalposts of life and not stand back with your thumbs in your mouth as a suckling child. I tell you that the hour has come when seriousness must come into the world and into mankind, that they may understand that the seriousness of God will bring them that divine satisfaction which means their freedom. Do you realize, precious ones, that many individuals in this city who have material issuing forth from the Summit Lighthouse have not even set foot in this house to come to this class to hear our dictations? Is there sincerity in those people, precious ones? It would seem from outer judgment that one would doubt it. Yet we who have inner judgment and inner sight are able to see all that they think and feel and we watch as the flimsy excuses pass across their mind as to why they cannot go. Precious ones, this is the difference between a winner and a failure in the divine domain. It is right judgment, and it is proper attention to detail, and it is consistency in effort, and it is determination exemplified in all that you think, say, feel, hear, or do. Ladies and gentlemen, may I today with the knighting sword of love, convey upon all of you, every one of you, the potential office of a knight and lady of the flame. Then perhaps one day, as you aspire to it and actually attain to it, you will find that we will confer upon you our love and the power of our office, that in the courts of heaven you may indeed find recognition because you have striven and won, not an outer symbol of victory, but the inner power of initiative, comprehension, that understands all things because it has become all things. Oneness is victory when it is understood, but union 
with that which is not light will not produce the spark of God reality in your world. Hear me now, understand me now, and hold the cup which I hold. Drink the drink which I drink, and be that which I am. It is a gift of God to you. It is potential for all who hear me and all who will exhibit the understanding that I have sought this day to convey. In the name of heaven and the love fire that descends without ceasing from the great throne of life, I bid you adieu. May grace crown your noble efforts and may the beauty of the heavenly city in full view before your mind spur you on to renewed heights of cosmic attainment. Again, I thank you. I remember the tenderness of the breeze wafting in from the Pacific. I remember the golden temples of the sun in the whole of our sun land. I remember the Yucatan. I remember the elder days of art when nobility and grandeur was the law of Inkle, computed by hearts attuned to the symphonies of heaven and exhibiting the compassion of a son who was bathed in the sun rays, one who stood to absorb the grace of God and knew the meaning of pure love, golden, scintillating love that never knew the meaning of the word fatigue, for God's love is tireless. And the accumulation of energy that was given to us was very great. You absorb the solar rays today and tan the skin. We absorb the rays of the sun behind the sun and we're free from sin. We absorb the law, the holy law of the one, the law of the golden rule, the law that separated man from being self-fooled. In his heart, the mighty word was written and upon his lips 
the great seal was never broken save to communicate the thoughts of love which were spoken. Tenderness was engrafted into every heart, the tenderness of the vine of God, the tenderness of the vine that conveyed the communicant's cup, the new wine, the ever new wine. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Blessed were the holy women who walked among us, and our esteem of their light was great. Nobility rested upon every brow, for men were God-taught from the cradle, onward and upward into the sun kingdom, the kingdom of light that spread abroad across our land. Great and mighty roads did we build. The architecture of our temples and schools, even today, stands imitated by your modern Egypt and the ancient Egypt. Understand then that to construct is wiser than to destruct. To build is wiser than to tear down, save when the tearing down will be for the building, because that which is torn down is that which has outlived its usefulness. I come this night to draw you unto myself, that I may impart unto you holy wisdom. The wisdom of the god and goddess Meru is the wisdom of the life flame that pulsates in our retreat. It is the wisdom of God that shines into the hidden recesses of the mind and provides stimuli for lofty thoughts and noble ideals. There is no room for foolhardiness and for imbalance of ideation, but only room within the inn of our being for Christ illumination. Spreading out from our hearts, holy wisdom sought to enlighten the world, for so did the great ones impart to us. And the masters of holy wisdom who governed under planetary law in the name of God in the name of Inkel, did communicate to us as to how, in addition to our exports of merchandise, we should send abroad the light that was the light of our land, the light of God that never fails. The Brotherhood Supernal, in its outreach toward mankind, sought to weld in the world community a beautiful temple of concord, a temple so vast and so noble that men of every clime and of every thought, of every name, could come and bask in the wisdom flame of the brotherhood and have imparted unto them the knowledge of God that then sought to cover the earth even as the sea covereth the land beneath it. Here then, tonight, the mighty plans of the brotherhood and understand that in this day and age, now far removed from our time, the ancient times when the civilization of our land was very great, there is now spread abroad over the face of the whole earth, even as in the days of the flood, a multitude of people, a great host of the world community, and there is discord as before the flood, and there is shadow, and there is pain, and there is the making of merry among men, and the spreading abroad of the tents of confusion, where men dwell and know not the meaning of holy wisdom. Now then, tonight, 
as we go to the ancient golden records on spindle spools and draw them forth, as we recreate the scenes of the mass destruction when the cataclysmic waves swept forth and Atlantis sunk beneath the waves to rise no more in that era, so do we perceive the records of man's present discord as indicative of solemn warning. And we are mindful of the mighty outcry that rose from the hearts of the people in the days of Belshazzar and his thousand lords when the words appeared by electric power written by the hand of God in the sacred fire element upon the very structure of the ancient temple. Mini, mini, tikel, a person, thou art weighed in the balances, and thou art found wanting. Once again, across the land, across America, across the world, the pulsation goeth forth. Hear ye the word of God. The Most High God hath visited thee, and he hath found in thy temples that discord does reign, yea, and confusion. He findeth once again the money changers seeking to overturn the tables of the law. And once again the record has been read and the measurement taken. Hear ye this, a cubit and a cubit and a cubit and a half a cubit has the measurement been taken. And the Most High God has stretched his hands over the waters and he has stretched his hands over the dry land, and behold, the air respondeth to his call, and the fire cometh forth, and there is mourning in the hearts of nature for the contemplation of the will of the Almighty concerning the people of this earth riseth up as a smoke of burning, and there is a portent of great destruction that shall surely come upon this land, yea, upon this entire earth, unless mankind shall quickly waken. But the lords of karma have been stirred, and the power of the earth riseth up. Yea, and the gods of the earth come forth from out of the holy mountain, and there is a fire that breaketh forth to the burning, and there is a flood of great water, and a mighty wind that sweepeth the earth. And behold, all things are now brought before me to judgment. Yea, and there paleth before me the thoughts of men. Their insignificant thoughts pale before me, and they come for judgment. And there is naught to remember, for all have been taken away, and there is none that have been saved. Behold, this is the thought of the mass creation of man, and it is the recording of that which shall surely be, unless there come forth the mighty Christ's salvation unto the earth, as it was forsooth given in the original intent when the Son of God came unto the inn. And the innkeeper said, There is no room within this inn for thee. Thus has the Son of God come unto mankind individually, and they have said, We have no room in our hearts for thee. And thus the stone which the builders rejected is yet set before mankind to be the head of the corner. Yea, and the holy temple of God will he build, because it shall be builded according to the cubit measurement and the statutes of our God. And the Christ shall remain fixed as the head of the corner and there is no other head, nor shall there be any other head, for the word is gone forth, yea, and the cup of trembling is full to the overflowing, and behold, the sea giveth up her dead, yea, and all that shall be judged come forth and stand before God, and they are judged, and the record book is opened, and the Lord God readeth, and behold, his judgment is just. Let all people, yea, a mighty people, as the waters do speak with a trembling, understand that the word of God rolleth forth, and that the word that rolleth forth is not the word of confusion, nor the word to dismay, but the word to say, lift up your heads, for your salvation is nigh. For now as I have given the former picture, so do I give the latter. And the latter that I shall give shall be greater than the former. For the latter picture which I shall give is the story of the latter rain. It is the reign of infinite love and compassion that weighs the hearts of men. And behold, their hearts are pierced by many arrows, and a sieve do they make of their hearts. And there is released 
therefrom the life essence which flows forth. And there is a cry unto God that the full measure of his compassion as drops of mercy shall break forth and that there shall be a renewal of the ancient covenants. Thus has the brotherhood assembled this night to hear the word of enigma, to hear the word of stipulation, to hear the stipend of Almighty God and to bear the reproach of his rod. For surely I shall do this thing, saith the Lord God of hosts, and I shall not stay my hand until the last farthing of the judgment which I shall exact from this people shall come forth. For behold, I have given unto them every good thing, and I have withheld from them nothing. I have given unto them the very spirit and essence of myself. I have given unto them holy wisdom by which I wrought and framed the universes without end. I have given unto them the powers and compassions of the heavens. Yea, I have shaken the heavens, that the heavens may discharge their stars unto the earth. And their stars are very great. They are the power of illumination's ray. And behold, men have sought by wisdom to take heaven by storm. But now that which I have brought forth to be a salvation unto them have they rejected, and they have gone their separate ways. Therefore I say unto you, they have cut themselves off from me, and I will remember them no more. For the hour is come when men who will find the latter rain must turn unto the Lord God of hosts, and must understand the word of wisdom, that him who hath an ear hear that which I speak. For it is not the word of mortal density, nor of mortal propensity. It is the word of God that maketh clean the soul and purifieth the hands unto the doing and fashioneth a new man out of that old man of sin and shame and rejection. Those who have rejected me have rejected themselves and surely they shall perish in their rejection for I am the Lord God of life. I am the Lord of life, yea, and the God of death for I am over both death and life. And I have in my hand the power to trace the image of myself upon the mind and heart of man as divine character, embellished by such love as men choose to give. And now I come forth to sing unto you a new song, the song of regeneration which shall supersede the former image, which shall pass away, as mankind shall see and behold that which I seek to do this night. For a mighty thing shall I do, and the children of men for all generations shall understand that which I shall do. I say, stir ye not, but remain fixed in your seats, for behold, I will have no movement, neither the movement of the mind, but only the understanding to hear that which I have determined to shed upon you as light from the great temples of the brotherhood throughout the planetary body. Behold, it shall come forth, and you shall see it with your eyes and hear it with your ears, yet your heart shall not understand all of it, but such portion as you shall find within yourselves to externalize, that shall ye understand and no more. This then shall we do. This then shall we do. This then shall we do. Behold, the light, the golden light of illumination is now brought forth unto the planetary body and the power of Meru's retreat, yea, of the God and Goddess Meru through whom I am speaking shall also be brought forth unto the world, and the world shall see and taste of the fount of holy illumination. Now then, hear this, for it is the will of God that ye shall understand much of what I have said unto you, and much of that which I shall speak unto you on the instant, and that which you cannot ye shall store in your hearts until the appointed time. Behold, the light of God shall not fail. Behold, the light of God shall not fail. Behold, the light of God shall not fail. For now there ariseth a mighty cloud in the east, and it cometh forth with singing and rejoicing. It is the company of all those who have obtained their victory, and they are coming forth upon this cloud of great beauty and glory, and holy illumination is before them. For behold, a mighty act is done in the name of the great white brotherhood, and for the illumination of men. I see before me now thy great shield, O God, I may rue see thy shield. Yea, and upon thy shield there is traced the shepherd's crook. And thus, this is the meaning of that which I see. The shield is the shield of the word. The shield of the word that speaketh unto man and saith, I am thy shield and thy exceedingly great reward. Whatsoever men shall do, 
that shall be done unto them. This law remaineth. It is the law of the golden one, the law of the golden rule. But the shepherd's crook is being transferred now as a scepter of authority from the mighty laws of God, from the ancient of days, yea, even unto the time of David's appointing as the shepherd king. And thus the crown and the shepherd's crook become one upon thy shield, O God. And there is transferred through the power of light the old and ancient bestowal of the ancient of days to the shepherd kings, symbolized by the shepherd's crook and the holy crown, the understanding of God that shall fashion itself as a shield within the hearts of men. And it shall come to pass that this shield shall find itself to be a defensive mechanism of Almighty God within the hearts of the elect. And they shall wear upon their hearts the shield of the shepherd's crook and the crown. Thus it shall come to pass that mankind shall no more seek to find guidance from without, but they shall seek to find from within the power and knowledge of God which shall cover the earth even as the sea covers the dry land. Therefore hear the word of the Lord God of hosts spoken through Meru this night to all people, to all tongues, to all kindreds, and to all life. God shall put within thyself his own shield, and God shall emblazon thereupon the holy shepherd's crook, which denotes the power of the shepherd kings, yea, of the masters of wisdom of the great white brotherhood. And it shall come to pass that men shall no longer say to one another, No God, for all shall know me from the least unto the greatest. I shall bring forth within the domain of the sincere those who will accept this transfer, the power of the holy guru within themselves. The holy teacher shall manifest within themselves, and they shall find that they may minister unto themselves through their holy Christ presence, serving themselves as initiators into the mysteries of God. And there shall go before them the mighty fire, the mighty fire, the mighty fire of the holy Christ self and illumination shall break forth and cause them to break forth with a song of rejoicing, saying, We are of the company of the Lamb, yea, of the royal tribe of Judah, of the spiritual Israel, of the Lord God of hosts. We of all people, of all tongues, and of all nations shall rejoice. For behold, my law breaketh forth unto mankind, and the seal of the brotherhood has been broken. And this night there is spread abroad the mighty vials of authority of Almighty God that shall pour down upon the earth and signify from this night on that the wrath of God has come forth to produce perfection through the law of the one. Yea, this shall be the law. Man shall understand that that which he shall do shall suddenly return unto him with swiftness as of mighty wings, and he shall perceive that the Lord God of hosts hath not forsaken him, for he shall bear the ancient covenant, those whom I love will I chasten. And thus shall the chastening of the lords of karma descend as mighty vials of wrath upon the earth, and it shall come to pass that the people upon the earth shall ask themselves what is coming, yea, what is coming upon the earth, and they shall understand that the blue lightning of God's divine love is coming upon the earth and that the earth shall be purged, and that the earth shall be cleansed, and that preparation shall be made for the new Jerusalem to descend upon this planet as the cubit stone made white and pure for the refining by the sacred fires of Almighty God, purifying in men all that needs and requires it, and purifying upon the planet and in the body of nature all that requires it. And there shall come to pass upon the earth the lighting and kindling within the temple of man, and the holy oil of illumination shall flow from the holy mountain of God, and wisdom shall be nourished as men understand that holy wisdom ought to be, and they shall turn from all of their darkness and the clamor and from the burning of Babylon as the merchants and great men of the world seek to make merchandise of men, they shall turn from all of that and unto the Lord God of hosts, and they shall build upon the holy mountain a mighty temple, and all shall walk toward that temple in the spirit of concord with the mighty spirit of life, light, and love, 
And it shall come to pass that the knowledge of God, which shall become the shepherd crook and the great holy crown of life, shall be bestowed upon all, and all shall see me as I am, and all shall know me from the least unto the greatest, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people, and there shall be no more sorrow, nor crying, nor weeping, for I will wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no pining, and there shall be one house, and one God, and one people, and oneness shall be the rule of the law of one. Restoration is in my hand, and I bring it as a gift. Yea, I bring it as a gift, and illumination's flame is the power to convey the golden age symbol to mankind today. Understand then the shepherd's crook and crown of life are yours to take. You must convey to self today the power to take your stains away and understand the law of truth that provides to all, including your youth, the doorway to life eternal pure, the doorway to make your life secure. Understand then all that I have said to the best of your ability and know that I, Meru, have spoken from out the depths of our ancient civilization here in South America. I have called unto you out of the depths of my love and you have heard my voice. I have called in the name of the one God. I have called in the name of the one brotherhood and I have called to all nations and kindreds and tongues for all have been made out of one life essence and I have called unto them all saying hear ye the word of God today that the former vision be passed away and be replaced by the latter that which is not for the destruction of mankind but only to bring to a shambles the state of world confusion and replace that confusion by the holy wisdom of the holy innocent who have sought to produce the fruit of perfection upon this planet again and again. Yet men like Nimrod came forth and in the banality of their fleshly wisdom did seek to build a tower unto heaven that was fostered upon mortal aims. Now then the Lord God hath spoken unto thee this night and within thyself there is registering the power of his holy awe. I assure you by the holy law of God that all that he has spoken of the former thing shall surely come to pass upon this generation and the succeeding one if there is a succeeding generation unless mankind shall turn and serve God and his holy law and shall quickly awaken from that negative manifestation which they have spawned and nourished upon the face of the earth as the powers of darkness which shall surely be shaken this night as I am speaking to you, I see from afar a mighty angel descending from a great star. And the name of that star is Wormwood. And it has come to pass that bitterness and gall shall descend upon the children of men who shall not pursue the pathway that leadeth to freedom and truth. It shall come to pass that they shall be bathed in that gall which was offered to the Christ upon the cross. And they shall understand that that which they have given to the children of men shall be given unto them once again. For vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord God of hosts. I will repay. I shall surely judge this land and all lands upon this planet. And it shall come to pass that my judgment shall be known as just. And my judgment is for the freeing of the nations. And my judgment is to spread abroad illumination's flame and to bring all to the feet of their divine presence that I may bathe their feet even as they bathe mine in the very life essence that flows from my heart that I may wash their feet clean and that they may lean upon the staff of life and lean forward to kiss the feet of the holy saviors whom they have crucified whom they have despised whom they have shunned, whom they have hated, and whom they have disregarded. The time when men shall successfully pursue the path of darkness shall soon end upon this planet, for the brotherhood have surrendered the cross and the crown. The shepherd kings have ended their reign of a vast era across the face of the earth, 
stretching from the golden ages over which I presided long ago in South America unto the present day. And the shepherd kings are laying their crowns down before the lords of karma, and their crooks they lay down. Yea, the shepherd crooks to guide the children of men. And mankind today shall stand face to face with the God resolve which they themselves shall make and frame. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. And now, blessed ones, as I take the mighty golden spindle that is before me and unfurl it, I would read to you some of the ancient records that are recorded there, that ye may understand how we taught in our ancient temples. Hear ye the word of God. Of Inkle it is said, how great thou art. Of Inko it is said, how magnificent is the spanning of thyself. Of Inko it is said, who is like unto thee? And the word of the priest was spoken to interpret. And he spake unto the people and said, Behold, as thou art great, O man, as thy greatness has covered the earth with its fruit, consider then how great is the knowledge of the person of God. Consider how great is the knowledge of his sons, the sons of fire, who maketh his handiwork to stand. Consider also his angelic personages, those whom he has created to bear the tidings of good joy and great wisdom to all people. Consider then all that God has done through these his servants, and know ye that that which he hath done through his servants, and that which he hath done, yea, that which he hath manifested of himself, is very great indeed. In emulation of the Most High God, thou shalt be lifted up, and thou shalt be given wings, and thou shalt fly. And thy wings shall not melt, neither shall they descend to the earth and cast thee down. But they shall bear thee up, and thou shalt obtain that crown of victory which God himself will impart unto thee. For with the certificate of thy creation came the certificate of thy victory. For the divine intent was made from the beginning, yea, from the founding of thyself in the realms of the living. And God hath determined that thou shouldst also sit with him upon his throne, having attained to the full measure of himself, yea, to his stature. This is the victory of God. This, my brethren, is the understanding of these words, that by bestowal the Most High God shall give unto mankind not only the power of generation, but the power of regeneration, and he shall become as a god, yea, to put forth his hand to eat of the fruit of the tree of life and to live forever. Thus the divine intent is manifested. Thus shall it manifest in ye as ye accept it and eat of the manna of the living word. So do thou this thing and live. So do thou this thing not, and surely thou shalt die. So, my beloved ones, ends the reading of the words and the interpretation of the priests, yea, of Inkle. Understand then the law of the one, and understand the fount of flame. For now, as I have spoken unto thee, there have come forth from the Godhead ten thousand angels of the sacred fire, who have gathered round about Lumination's flame. And the flame has arisen, yea, it has multiplied itself sevenfold, and it pulsates with great beauty and delicacy of color. I see within it mother of pearl, I see within it the beauty of the rainbow, and I see the gold sending forth flecks of light that seem to fly as sparks from a mighty fire, yea, from a pillar of witness unto all nations of the world. And thus has the law flashed forth its light, and thus has illumination's flame been bestowed to mankind. And thus the power of illumination's flame is increased as a fount for the healing of the nations and the sparks of its glory are carried by the angelic hosts as though the communion wafer were to impart to mankind illumination. So has God provided in these latter times the way back to his heart that each seeker may find the impulse to start and to travel, to journey, using his own shepherd's crook as a staff to place it upon the land and to carry himself that he may not faint neither be weary, but mount up as on eagle's wings until he can see the paradise of God and the holy city manifesting before his vision. And when that vision becomes clearer and clearer to his mind, 
he will know that nothing shall nor nothing can dissuade him from the manifestation of his God intent. For the Lord is very great. And when God has determined that a thing shall be, it but requires the acceptance of that determination by mankind to crystallize and flash forth as a sacred fire element within themselves, carrying them on to the mighty lodestone of eternal victory. Your victory is assured, precious ones, when you understand this law, and there is no power in heaven or earth that can ever take from you the mighty regenerative power of the cosmic Christ the mighty regenerative power of the sacred fire and the holy flame of illumination that God has sent forth as a goodly portion of his own wisdom, which he can receive, which he can use, which he can love, which he can expand. And thus shall his light spread over the land. And the children of darkness and of mammon, they shall be as chaff before the breeze of the Holy Ghost, and they shall be scattered. And the children of God shall flourish and they shall build houses and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards, and they shall pick the fruit thereof. And behold, the knowledge of God shall be very great in the land, and the love of God shall expand and expand, and purity shall command and command, and life will move onward and upward in the eternal spirals and cycles of God's magnificence and eternal perception until the wonders that you shall behold shall flash forth in your mind to create ever new vistas of concepts divine. And the holy music of the spheres shall be heard by your ears and you shall know even as you are known. And the Ancient of Days shall sing, and ye shall hear his song within your souls. And as that song rises, and the peals thereof reverberate to the farthest ends of creation, ye shall speak, and you shall know that I am God. And you shall see that within yourself God liveth, and ye shall say one unto another, I am God, and it shall be no desecration. For the fount of his flame as holy illumination shall rise and rise with great pulsation. The victory of light shall stand to end all strife, and the victory of light shall pulsate through the night. And the Son of God shall see that there is no more war, neither discord nor contempt for virtue pure, but only the light expanding and expanding the great security of the holy seven rays that now blaze forth from Lake Titicaca in the regenerative cycle of our God, the infinite capacity of God within to do that which is the bulwark against all sin, confusion, and mortal din, and will fortify mankind as they ought to be fortified with the armor of God, the great shield of faith of Archangel Michael, the mighty sword of blue flame, and the power of the helmet of salvation, rendered forth as the crystalline helmet of salvation to all men who will wear it in joy, in compassion, and without fear. For I am the Lord thy God, and my reward is with me, and it is exceedingly great, and I come with bounties of fruitfulness and replenishment of all the former states, until the smile within your hearts shall break and shatter the matrices of mortal fears and illusions and dispel the curtains of darkness and confusions and purify the soul by all its washing by the word made whole, the word that rolls and rolls and rolls through the universal avenues and corridors of eternal beauty and perception. Lo, as the Christ spake, I am with thee always, yea, even unto the end that is the ever new beginning of cycles without end. I, Meru, salute you with the kiss of God's holy wisdom peace. And I give you now my consort and beloved, the goddess Meru. I 
have wandered far from daybreak to the twilight gloaming. I come back with the evening star. Beloved ones, from the octaves of fire I am come, and to infuse you with the tangible love of your immortal presence. Born of God, as the Holy Spirit that cometh from the farthest corner of the universe, to the omnipresence of right where you are. Understand, precious ones, the depth of the infinite love that framed and made you not as you manifest outwardly, but as you manifested on that precious day of creation when the power of the Holy Spirit gave you breath. Then, when God saw that work of his own hands, he spake and said, Lo, it is good. And so it was a moving good that moved as light upon the darkness of the deep and brought wherever it moved the flow of God's peace and it was the peace that passed understanding unto the created and there was born mind and consciousness, and every good and gracious thing. Understand now, gracious ones, children of the light, and those who love the Holy Spirit, that as I am speaking to you this night, my words are simultaneously being carried to all of the retreats of the great white brotherhood upon this planet. And as these words are reaching out into the ethers, they are becoming increasingly charged with the light rays of the eternal creation. The eternal creation is with thee now. The eternal creation is the magnificent spark of the sacred fire that in thyself did leap into manifestation 
and that which occurred in thee occurred in all, for all were born of God and will be born upon the winds of the Holy Spirit as man lifts his consciousness from mortal density and seeks to honor the great cosmic purpose for which he came into manifestation. Not in substance were ye then, neither were ye frightened, and as rabbits did you seek to run. But you were children of the sun, whose hearts were stirred by the voice of the Logos, pouring forth the vibratory action of himself through thyself, and sweeping thee free as a crystal flowing stream to appreciate the love that had created thee. Did ye know, precious ones, that as the music preceded my coming, I sent out a wave of joy that pulsated to the ends of the earth. And I sent it out in order that all mankind might share, even as on that day of holy remembrance, when God called the great Congress of Souls into manifestation and said, let there be life, even as he did say, let there be light. And the fiat of God was triune, and it expressed a holy triunity, which mankind are prone to forget in the littleness of the generative concepts, which occupy their minds with fruitless doings, and serve not even one of the holy causes, nor even to fulfill the purposes of their being. Be not afraid, for the mighty power of God is like a wind, but not an ill wind that bloweth no good unto men, but a wind that is laden with the fruits of God magnificence and with the understanding that brings joy so that joy may flow out over the waters and trumpet through the atmosphere with the symphony of cosmic concord that will call men and summon them once again to come to that temple of concord, that place of light where the Holy Spirit will forge a cosmic unity by divine love, by the holy wisdom of God, and by that power which wrought all beauty in creation from the beginning. And this night speaketh unto mankind as his cup is filled with fear and trembling because of the things that are coming upon the earth as a result of man's banality and disregard and fear and continuous repetition of activities of shadow and darkness which create pain and anguish to all parts of life. There is no part of life that can perforce, perform an activity which does not react upon that one himself. Every child of the light ought to understand then the meaning of the Good Shepherd concept. For men are so prone to discard that which they feel is so easy to unravel and so easy to reveal. Enigma often is a trap for mankind, not only for the powers of light, but for the powers of shadow. And you must understand, gracious ones, how that enigma will come to man's mind to create a sense of confusion and puzzlement. God is clear as light, as crystal, as a flowing stream, and the great cornucopia of his magnificence is filled with the bounties of his thoughts of bestowal. Was it not said? It is more blessed to give than to receive. Is God not the great giver? 
Is God not the greatest giver? Whose every thought and impulse moves by light, not to destroy or affright, but to convey and to obey his own mandates. There is no density in the light of his presence, but only a resurgence and a resurgence and a resurgence that fills and floods the cup of life to overflowing. You will do well to study to show thyself approved unto his laws, the laws of God that are so intricately interwoven within all that man has desired to do. For the records of the Eternal One are written in many forms and in the faces of men and in their desire to find release from the distress that has often tormented them to a point where they would gladly relinquish their life in that awful moment. Understand then that this is not the plan of God who has wrought a noble work in man. God has wrought a noble work and from the beginning has sent it forth. The ears of men have become dull and they do not understand the fragile glory of a moment as a flower unfolds. They do not understand the fragile glory of a moment as a divine concept molds. They do not understand the divine concept of a moment that expresses in symphony, for their minds are often off key and they straddle the world as though it were their own and understand not that it is. What mystery, what fragile mystery is conveyed within the magnificence of God, within the soul and the body and the frame and the whole. Man is not destined to be a nobody, but to be someone whom God loves. Your beloved friend of light, Master El Moria, when he wrote in a previous embodiment, believe me, if all those endearing young charms which I gaze on so fondly today were to fade by tomorrow and fleet in my arms as fairy gifts fading away, did reveal the strands of mortality and behind it he did show the great love concept, the love of God that cannot forsake the creation which he has made, but even after bestowing upon mankind the infinite capacity of his holy will, and seeing and perceiving through the Holy Christ self as the divine mediator, the defection of mankind as he went out into the desert places of life and suffered the barren exposures to the heat of the noonday sun, did speak and convey to mankind yet concerning his love. For God has spoken again and again, and he will speak again and again, because he speaketh through the Holy Spirit in order to return mankind to their rightful place in the sun, where they can understand the law of the Holy One that is within themselves. Men seek to find the law expounded by another, when within themselves there is the steadfast and ceaseless beat of the mighty tides of life. Their hearts do indeed beat as one with God, and yet they understand it not, and they feel the awful pangs of separation, and separation is no bond to truth, and separation is no bond of proof, for separation is absence from God. I am here then tonight to convey the great Homeric concept of homing to mankind. 
The roaming concepts of mankind stem from the restless tides of life that were generated in deceit practiced upon the self. The homing concepts of life are the great laws and the great law of the eternal Om. The Om, the Om, the home, the one, the law, the life, the love, the superiority that exceeds all mankind's fears of inferiority of expression. For in the pathological and in the psychological world, if we were to dissect it, you would find that mankind are basically confused about that which they think they understand the best. Do you understand this, O mankind? The very laws which they feel they know the best are often that in which they are the most confused. Even the outer laws that they operate and control and that they seem to control are scarcely known unto men today. For in the basic simplicities of life, the great cosmic laws are engraved with all of their intricate patterns. But the mind of man does not have the capacity to fathom these depths. And therefore, surface living has become the manifestation upon the planet. Yet tonight, Regardless of all that man has done and all that he can do, his capacity to hurt and his capacity to heal, we are determined that those children of the dawn in whom the resplendent fire spark sun radiance does manifest shall hear our voice. We are determined that according to the prophecy and prediction of the Lord Christ, those who are in the grave shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. And we are determined that as in the vision of Ezekiel in the valley of dry bones, the spirit of man shall be infused with the spirit of God. I recall to you and to your mind the affair of Balaam the son of Bozar, who was rebuked by the dumb ass speaking with the man's voice. If mankind are determined not to heed us as we speak through the many avenues through which we speak, then we will speak also unto the stones, and they shall cry out. And behold, the word shall go forth to the ends of the earth, and the call shall go forth for peace, and the call shall go forth to beat mankind's swords and spears into pruning hooks and implements of peace. We are determined, regardless of the world's affections for war and their determination to continue on a greed-based philosophy that the light of the cosmic Christ shall expand even through the false shard of religion which mankind have created in a banal ignorance and said, here is God. And we are determined to expand through that until the clay vessel itself of the outer structure shall crumble and molder away, and the glory of the Shekinah radiance that appeared in the tabernacle of witness before the children of Israel shall spring forth as a sound of joy in the lightning of his love made manifest by the power of the Holy Spirit, the regenerative activity of the Holy Ghost which is within men. And thus, shall the young men dream dreams, and thus shall the old men prophesy, and thus shall the young men prophesy, and thus shall the old men dream dreams, and all shall understand that the Spirit of God is with men. The tabernacle of witness it was called. Well, think ye then that God cannot witness within your own flesh? I say unto you that God can witness in your flesh and make it ever-living substance. They have begun, or so they think, to actually bring about eternal life in the laboratories of the world. And so because they are able to keep alive the heart of a chicken, as Alexis Carell did do for a span, 
They seem to think that there is hope for man. I tell you, it lies not in the domain of the human or human reason, but in the great light of God that frees mankind from bondage to the flesh and maketh all things do his bidding by the spiritual command of the immortal Logos that speaketh from within himself. This is the law of the Holy Spirit. It is the power that enables the ascended masters to come as they will and with the speed of light manifest where they will. As the wind bloweth where it listeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Won't you please be seated? Ladies and gentlemen, if I were to pen for you in word imagery the picture of an ascended being so that you could see and feel that God magnificence that is embodied within form, for the ascended masters also have a form within the higher octaves and are able to lower the vibratory actions of that form into the earthly octaves at will. Do you think for one moment, precious ones, that when an individual loses their flesh form, seeing they are a mortal spirit, that they cease to exist and depart from the world of reality to be a thing that never shall be again? Is this your concept of the love of God? Do you think that the love of God that creates the marvelous patterns of nature unfolding and losing their bloom only to return to the lovely room of the world, the outer doorway toward heaven, do you think that when they renew themselves again and again that God will spew thee out as though you were an unclean thing, I tell you nay. For God has no desire to spew out the creation which he has made and which he has loved and which is the implementation of his grace by the power of the Holy Spirit in action. You must understand, and I have said it again and again, and I will say it again, the mighty laws of God, if you will have your freedom, for your freedom lies within your understanding. If you understand it not, then you will fit the awful pattern of the mortal blot. But if you will cut yourselves free from all that is mortality, you will find the great key to the secrets of eternity radiating through you as light and power and love, as the infinite power and grace of a cosmic Christ who spoke to a little child and said, give me the loaf and break the bread and did feed the multitudes, 5,000 in number. Understand then the power of God that thundered as he himself did speak to mankind and the people that stood by said, lo, it thundered. You must understand the law, for the law is your key to salvation. You must understand the awe, for the awe of God is reverence that commands the mortal self to be still when it would speak and tell you that this is not his will. When the mortal self would say, this is trumpery and foolishness, you must reply, I will fly to the heart of my divine presence, and I will find there within the heart of that presence all that can command my outer self to be still and I will be filled with his will and I will do it and I will not eschew it but I will command and all life shall obey for I am the law of the one in action here. I am the law that casts out fear. I am the law that shows forth delight. I am the law of love and light. You must understand then that the Holy Spirit is this law in action within you and that the Holy Spirit is the Christ consciousness in action, that the Christ consciousness is wise and all perceptive. It is not mortal wisdom. It is not outer concepts. It is the internal concept of the Holy Spirit that functioning in Christ Jesus did command life and cause it to obey. In yourselves, this activity will spring into action. Why do men find that they cannot derive satisfaction from religious activity? Because there is no spark within themselves that brings it into vitality and life. You must understand that God wants you to know and to do and to live and to prove his laws. Oh, precious ones, as I look upon the record of some of you, I find again and again the awful repetition of fear invading your world. As I look upon your auras, I see where your thoughts have been. I cannot do this. This is not for me. I find again and again that you even question those who can. 
and have doubts concerning such men. Let me call to your attention that this is the problem of the ascended hosts, to bring into tangible physical manifestation the mighty law of God, because there is a great realm of human doubt, a cesspool of human vanity that prevents men from being that which they in reality are. Open wide then the gates of the temple, open wide the gates of your heart to Christ's magnificence, understand the meaning of his command to the Christ as a command unto thee. Thou art my beloved son, this day have I begotten thee. Understand this law, I am that I am, I am that I am, I am that I am. Thou art my beloved son, this day have I begotten thee. So do thou be free. As the wind bloweth where it listeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, and masters of wisdom in all of our temples throughout the world, let the vibratory action of our God determination this night flow forth into the universal ether surrounding the planet, and let there be an intensification of all that we have thought to do for and on behalf of mankind. Beloved Chananda of the Indian Brotherhood, Beloved Lanto of the Great American Brotherhood, Beloved Meru and Goddess, we salute thee and bow to thee, the Holy Triunity, the Great Cosmic Family, the Beloved Jesus, the Beloved Lady Master Mary, and the Beloved Saint Germain, as the Triune figures representative of the Holy Family, salute thee in the name of God. The Brotherhood has caused it to be sealed, and it is made a part of the universal Akasha. So is the record made, so is it written, and so it shall be done. So it shall be done, so it shall be done, so it shall be done. In the name of heaven and the Holy Spirit, I thank you. <laughs>